What is going on, everybody? It's Alex. Come back to another video. And today, I'm going to be regrading the 2020 NFL draft. It's a way too early regrade, but I was one of the first, it was honestly the first draft I covered in a semi deep dive. So we're going to look at it. We're going to, uh, we're going to grade each single team. We're not going to go exactly pick by pick because, again, some of these picks like Eno Benjamin, there, there's a lot of stuff that A hasn't been answered because of depth, as well as B, you know, some people just won't have an impact and that's okay. So for the most part, we're going to be focusing on their top three picks, usually um, in the impact rounds. I like to say, uh, yes, Broshmo did do this video about a month ago and I asked him for permission. So we're all good on that one. I wanted to have a fun video for you guys because again, this is where it all began right here, the 2020 draft. So starting off with the Arizona Cardinals, I gave them an A minus overall for the draft. So Obviously, Isaiah Simmons has a lot of growth to do, and uh, that's why I'm not writing him off. Same thing with Josh Jones. We don't know what we have there, but we do have their starting nose tackle. Uh, Richard Lawrence is somebody who also is um, definitely somebody who can have some rotational snaps in there. I think that they got some solid impact players, and again, this is way too early to call exactly how these guys' careers are going to turn out, but Isaiah Simmons is progressing. And Josh Jones is going to provide some excellent depth. And I think he should honestly fit in at guard. But, you know, obviously they have Beecham as well as Humphreys there, the tackle spots. And I don't think he's going to take their job anytime soon. Again, I think that he should move into guard and play a solid role, which is what I thought when he first got drafted. And then again, you got your starting nose tackle, really solid A minus. I just think that, again, you need to get that. If you get that A, it's going to be because you get impact players day one or because they've shown a shit ton of promise, which again, we've only seen one guy who actually has shown anything apart from Lucky Foto, which again, he's not like a top three talent as position. Second over, uh, second overall, I guess not second overall. Second team, the Atlanta Falcons. I gave them a B plus. So AJ Terrell, I mean, every single, Bershaw said this, every single corner last year kind of suffered, right? Uh, it's not a year for defenses. They came in with pretty much no camp at all, no preseason. I don't blame these rookies for getting torn apart. They didn't even have time to prepare. And this is, you're going from college wide receivers all the way up to high-end NFL grade wide receivers. So I really don't blame AJ Troll for doing that terribly. Um, I don't even think he, he was definitely not the most terrible of all the rookie corners. He has a lot of promise there. Marlon Davidson, another guy who's going to take some time to develop. Matt Hennessy, another guy who is going to be able to get a solid role very soon, if not now. And then Michael Walker is a stud. I was a huge fan of that pick when that happened. And I've heard Jalen Hawkins had a role too. So I think there hasn't been any real day one impact. But, I mean, I think apart from Michael Walker, that's the case. But apart from that, I mean, these guys, there's nobody who I look at this, at this list and it's just like, wow, they suck. Like, they actually did a pretty good job getting guys who will be impacts, but – maybe not great impacts. That's why I give him a B plus. Again, I think AJ Trell was an overbuy as well as Barlin Davidson, Matt Hennessy, good pickup as well as Michael Walker. Ravens, I gave him a B plus. So I thought Patrick Green was a perfect fit. He definitely has his issues, missed tackles, uh, liability and coverage sometimes, but he shows a lot of promise. Like I said, you guys go back to my videos. I said he was too inconsistent. So I think that if he continues to get more comfortable, he was 20 years old when he got drafted, guys. He's going to be able to light it up. J.K. Dobbins, another pretty damn good impact. We'll see actually how he develops as a true RB1 this year, uh, having an actual offseason and everything like that. So very happy to see what J.K. could do because I had him as my number two running back that year, and he looks like he's probably the number two back. Number th- we, we also got Justin Madwika here who has a lot of potential. Devin DuVernay, I think that – It's just, I think he needs to go to a new team. I think that uh, he is fitting a role that a lot of guys on this team already fill. He's going to be pretty much a check down type of guy and a screen guy. And I think a team, another team could probably use him a lot better than this one. So uh, I'm a big fan of Devin DuVernay still, but he hasn't shown up. And they got a lot of guys here. There's just nobody who, again, is a star impact in my eyes. Uh, do I think that J.K. Dobbins has this locked for the next 12 years at running back or even the next uh, seven years after his contract? No, no. I don't think that he's solidified it whatsoever. He's a solid back, but I will need to see a little more progression before he's a true RB1. Same thing with Patrick Queen. There's a lot of guys on here who can be big impacts, but none of them who actually have been a legit full-time big impact. Buffalo Bills. 
Uh, I gave these guys a B minus. So AJ Epineza, obviously we see how they've been revamping their defense. Uh, Zach Moss. I thought that was honestly kind of the same thing that they had with Devin Singletary, except maybe a little bit better in the past game. I J, Gabriel Davis was probably the best pick from this. You know, they got a kicker. Good for you. Uh, the quarterback situation, they literally just brought him true biscuit. So uh, the, Dane Jackson also has moments. It's just, there's none of these guys I can see in probably like three to five years being like legit starters on this team. It just feels like it's been a draft that's patching up holes and that's okay. Certain drafts can definitely serve that role, but that doesn't mean that you're going get, to get a good grade. Obviously, if you want to get a bunch of impact players, it's going to matter a lot more than just putting the Band-Aid on stuff like New Orleans did this year. So next, Carolina. I gave him an A. Uh, Derek Brown definitely isn't the monster who we thought he was, but that doesn't mean he can't become it. You know, we saw that Quinton Williams also had a pretty pretty rough first year. So Derek Brown is an absolute animal. I don't think he was as good as Quinton Williams when I watched Quinton as well as Derek. So obviously I don't expect him to reach that level. However, there's a lot of growth potential right there. Yuter Gross Mato, same thing. He's going to be sitting behind uh, Hassan Reddick this year, but that's perfect. I think he should be a year three judge uh, where you judge him at year three based on his progression. Jeremy Chin, real stud, big stud right there. I hope to God they don't use him too much in like single high role. He does need to be more of that uh, dime linebacker situation. I think he plays that role extremely well. Troy Pride, pretty damn solid as well. Uh, Bravion Roy, if I'm not mistaken, he actually has had some, uh, some good reps and the same thing with, uh, Stanley Thomas Oliver. There's, they just had some pretty big impact. I see Derek Brown, Jeremy Chin being, uh, even Yuto Gross Matos being like legit starters in the future. That's why I'm giving them a great grade. Bears, Bears, I give them a B plus. This was a big bust of a pick for me. Um, so that's why it really just knocked it down, but Jalen Johnson, to me, is their true cornerback one. It's not going to be like Desmond Trufant, I believe, is who they brought on. It might not have been Desmond Trufant. Um, regardless, I think he probably is going to be their true cornerback one. Darnell Mooney, they literally just traded away their former second-round pick, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in Anthony Miller to pretty much have Darnell Mooney be the true wide receiver too. And it's not like, oh, Darnell Mooney wasn't getting snaps. But, you know, they felt comfortable saying, hey, Darnell Mooney is good enough to where we have the ability to get rid of Anthony Miller and still have weapons. So I think that you got two extremely stud talents right here. Cole Komet, again, he's going to take some time to develop. I never was a huge fan of him, but like there's definitely guys in here. Even Vildor is going to be a potential uh, impact player. So I think I really liked it. Again, B plus is not a great grade, um, I, which is kind of weird because I'm very harsh usually on my grades. But again, this is the problem way too early. But again, this is the first draft that I was actually in depth on. So it is going to be that way. We're going to probably do another one of these in a year's time and have some fun there. Bengals, Bengals, I gave Bengals an A. So yeah, Chicago got a B plus. Bengals got an A. Again, you got your franchise quarterback here. You got a franchise wide receiver there as well. Logan Wilson has potential. Akeem Davis Gaither is starting this year. Cleve Kareem is even pretty good. Overall, this was a pretty damn good class. So um, big cap off to the Bengals for doing that, even though I would not want them to. And then you got Cleveland, A minus grade right here. I mean, we haven't seen anything from Grant Delpit. Jordan Elliott starting. Jedrick Wills is a stud. I uh, don't, I don't think Jacob Harris is that great, to be 100 percent honest. Uh, Harrison Bryant's pretty solid too. Like this is a really solid draft. Uh, I think you have one legit starter for the future. Maybe Jordan Elliott as well. Maybe two. So that's what puts you in the A category, and that's really great. I hope to see Grant Delpit light it up as well. So. There's some big potential right there. Cowboys, I give them an A-. CeeDee Lamb, Trevon Diggs, two solid starters. Neville Gallimore needs a lot more progression and growth, but you got Tyler Biadage here as well. So I'm kind of taking it down a little bit for Neville Gallimore not being – he's still starting this year, if I'm not mistaken, but, you know, he's not an extreme impact yet. Uh, but you got starting center, you got starting corner, and as well as a starting wide receiver. That, to me, deserves an A- minus at least. So – I'm not 100% sure. I think they got rid of Reggie Robinson recently. They might have cut him, but might have been a different player that they had on the roster. Denver. So I gave them a B-. minus. Jerry Judy is solid. I didn't knock him for that pick. Obviously, drop issues, and it was pretty solid for the time being. Don't like KJ Hamler. I, was, I, I thought this was actually about where he should have been taken. But, again, it's not the right scheme for him. It's not the right quarterback. So... Not a big fan. Michael Ojemudier, they literally brought him four free agents to make sure that he's not starting. <laughs> Lloyd Cushenberry, I think that he's a bit overrated. Uh, Marcus, as well as I think that. 
And then uh, Albert O is pretty solid and Nite Moody as well. So again, it's not a crap draft. Again, we haven't seen any crap drafts yet. Uh, this, this, that class is pretty damn good. So, you know, you got quite a few studs in there. I like it a lot. So there's a lot of potential, but again, you know, the, there's a reason why this team is desperate for a quarterback is because they haven't really addressed it. <laughs> they, they've been having uh, drew lock in there and, you know, guys like KJ Hamler, when you could have tried to target somebody else, there's just holes in this roster that could have been filled in my opinion. And it just wasn't. And a lot of these guys haven't turned out. So a little bit unfortunate. Detroit. Detroit, I gave them a B, actually. Giving Jeffrey Akuda the benefit of the doubt. We already talked about the corner issue. Again, literally, you don't have any time to prepare, and then you're thrown into the NFC North. That's kind of a problem. Uh, DeAndre Swift, going to be their starting running back. Apparently, might be one of the highest yards, uh, highest statistical running backs in the NFL this year, given the fact that they might not be able to pass. Uh, Julian Aquara, love that pickup, and he's still pretty damn solid as well. Jonah Jackson, I think he's going to have a good role. Um, but Quintus Cephas, I, again, a lot of these guys I don't see in the future. Uh, I think from here on up, you can see these three being on the uh, on the team, maybe being able to get the second contract. But, I mean, if you're able to do that, that's solid enough. I don't think they're going to be top 10 talents in the NFL. That's why I'm holding off, especially since I've already given the benefit of the doubt to somebody who was complete crap last year in Jeffrey Akuda, Green Bay, I give him an F. You know, Jordan Love, again, we haven't seen it, but I have inside information camp saying he was not too bueno. Uh, so, you know, there there is that to put it right there. And again, even if Jordan Love is good, he's not going to be Aaron Rodgers level. And with the way that Aaron Rodgers is able to at least remain relevant, it's just like, why would they, they didn't need to do that? They just caused so much drama and destroyed the team because of it. AJ Dillon, um, I gotta love doing that. Like AJ Dillon right here is probably their best pickup, but I mean, really, it's not that great. Just uh, Josiah DeGuara is pretty crap as well. Uh, pretty sure they're using him as like a fullback. There just was a lot of guys who are not gonna be legit impacts from this draft, and it just felt like it was a big miss, a big whiff. Next, Houston. Uh, I was thinking about giving an F, gave him a D minus. Just because I think Ross Blacklock, I love tapping on people. Um, Ross Blacklock has a lot of potential there. Uh, Jonathan Grenard also can have potential. I mean, I just, I, I'm just hoping for these guys. Realistically, they probably should have gotten an F. However, I think again, Ross Blacklock does have that potential to step up and be a true starter in that interior defensive line. Next, we got Colts. I gave him an A. Think about it. Michael Pittman got to be a starter, uh, possibly their number one wide receiver this year. Jonathan Taylor going to be their number one back, possibly for a while. Hopefully injuries don't catch up. That was, that was my big knock on him was fumbles as well as uh, the amount of tread that's been taken off the tire. Julian Blackman, another amazing player. That's why it really thrusts them into the A. They got three solid starters that could be here for a long time. Um, even Jacob Eason has potential to be able to come in someday. Desmond Patton, uh, Patton pretty solid. You know, Robert Windsor was a sleeper guy for me. I don't know how he actually played in the last year. I don't know if he even did. But uh, he was somebody who I remember having like a six round grade on him. Pretty interesting to see him go right here, especially being able to sit under um, the nice interior defensive line group that they have with the Colts now. Next, we got Jacksonville Jaguars. I gave him an A minus. Uh, you know, CJ Henderson is going to be a true starter for a long time. Uh, Caleb on Chason has a lot of potential, a lot of potential. Hasn't reached it yet. And I think that's the reason why he fell. But, you know, I think that you have to give him a little bit of benefit of the doubt, given the fact that he was so raw coming to the NFL, you can't expect him to be. Legit day one. LaVisca could be literally a day one or their number one wide receiver there. So think about that. Number one corner slash and number one wide receiver would be pretty dope. Uh, Devon Hamilton, really good as well. You know, they're, they did a really good job here. Colin Johnson, another sneaky player for him. And if I'm not mistaken, Chris, uh, Chris Claybrooks played a pretty good role last year. I know that there was at least Claybrook or Claybrooks that played a good role on this uh, Jaguars team for at least if you for a seventh round pick. He did a damn good job. So pretty damn good overall. Big fan of that draft. Kansas City, I gave him an A. I'm pretty sure that Brochman gave him like a C or something. Uh, CEH is going to be their starting running back for a while. I just, he's, he's like that Sony, Mich he's like Sony Michelle plus one, just because I think that he is solid enough to get the job done and uh, solid enough to where they don't draft another guy, but not solid enough to where he's going to be a franchise guy for like more than like probably his first, maybe a couple years after his first contract. So 
whatever. Willie Gay Jr., I think he's a stud. Uh, Legereus Sneed, like these two guys put it into that A category. Both are excellent players. So big fan of both of those guys. Um, Lucas Niang, we'll see how he does. And you can never go wrong with some extra line depth. Raiders, give him a D. Uh, only because of Henry Ruggs. That's pretty much it. And Brian Edwards. Uh, Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards. And neither of them are amazing at all. So that kind of tells you how it is. Damon Arnett is a garbage. I hated that pick in the beginning, given F at the beginning. Uh, Lynn Bowden got traded away. And I actually like him on the Bron- uh, not the Broncos, the Dolphins. So, yeah, this was a pretty terrible draft. Terrible draft. And yeah, I'm, I'm just going to leave it right there. Chargers, Chargers gave him an A. Obviously, you got your franchise quarterback. Kenneth Murray needs to develop a little bit more. That's fine. Josh Kelly, I mean, they, they obviously brought in, um, I'm bugging, Kalen Balage for a reason. It's because Joshua Kelly couldn't probably get it done long term, but still solid enough to be good depth. And then KJ Hill is going to be an excellent depth wide receiver at Ohio State. It was a great steal later on. So, I mean, overall, you got your starting quarterback and a potential uh, centerpiece of your defense. That's worth an A to me. Los Angeles Rams, uh, I give him a B. Cam Akers, obviously, we're not even going to discuss the injury, but he looked pretty damn good. It's, he didn't look amazing. I honestly think that Cam Akers is a bit overrated, but uh, obviously that we can't even see if that's going to be true this year, which really sucks. I really wanted to see how he did in here too. Van Jefferson, there's a reason why they drafted Tutu Atwell. It doesn't look like he's going to be stepping up into a major role there, uh, at least for the near future. I just, Bryson Hopkins hopefully can do something. Jordan Fuller, as well as Terrell Burgess, or both. Uh, I think they're both pretty damn talented safeties. Only reason I had it up as, at a B, because I think they kind of whiffed on a lot of their picks. A lot of good guys on paper, but they haven't been able to put it uh, to the field yet. Dolphins, give them a B. Again, I think that um, Tua, obviously, we know Tua needs to step into his own. I hope he does this year. Uh, Austin Jackson, I was not a fan of that from the beginning. Obviously, invest in your quarterback by taking a tackle. They probably should have done that this year, but that's okay. You know, Austin Jackson was heavily overdrafted, and it showed. Uh, Igbenogany, obviously, uh, he was a bit overdrafted as well, but I think he's a pretty damn ta- uh, talented corner. You got solid linemen in here. I think that you should move Robert Hunt back into guard. And Raekwon Davis has had a pretty good time too. So there's a lot to like from this draft, but again, you're missing out on you – know, you kind of whiffed on a couple picks. Uh, Minnesota Vikings, you know, I give them an A. You got – obviously, we can't give an A-plus because Jeff Gladney is gone. But Justin Jefferson, arguably top 15 wide receiver in the NFL. Uh, you can even – some people even want to say top 10. Ezra Cleveland going to be a starter. Cameron Dantzler, a stud. When you're able to do that, that's going to automatically throw you into that A-minus to A category. Obviously, maybe they should have ended off as an A-minus. But, you know, the, I, I think that the talent of Jefferson and Dantzler puts them at an A. They did a very good job there. Patriots gave him an A minus. Uh, Duggar still has more potential to get to. He is older. I didn't like that pick from the beginning, but Uche, all right. You know, uh, Owenu, the only reason I gave, I gave him even close to an A minus is Owenu. That's it. He's like, that was an A plus pick. So Uche, Owenu, Duggar, going to be the only big bright spots, in my opinion, from this draft. Obviously, they went after tight ends after they went after two of them. So, like take that as you will, but you know, it's a big oof saints saints. Uh, I gave him a C minus, you know, Cesar Ruiz should take a big step up this year, but he didn't play well at all. Zach Vaughn don't really think he's that special. Adam Troutman's the only reason this team, I mean, this wasn't, excuse me, into that D range. So a uh, guy who looks like he can be a legit tight end in the NFL next New York giants. We give him an A minus. So Andrew Thomas, I think he's going to take a big step up. It's just unfortunate. You like put them right next to how like all the studs that are the top tackles in the NFL, which came from this draft. So, I mean, I think that he still could definitely reach that level. It's just kind of hard to win. You know, the physical monstrosities of Mackay Beckton as well as Tristan Wirfs end up becoming really talented as well. Andrew Thomas didn't have that unbelievable monstrosity build that those guys had. So He's a little bit at a disadvantage there, but he still has potential to be an excellent tackle. Matt Peer as well, really good. Xavier McKinney, solid. Uh, Darnay Holmes, going to be great as well. So I think that overall, this might have been even an A for me. I was on that um, on that tipping point, but I didn't think that Matt Peer had that big of an impact. Same thing with Darnay. He was good, but 
maybe uh, these guys didn't show out like Justin Jefferson would uh, in that case. New York Jets gave him an A. Obviously, we just talked about Mekhi Becton. He's a beast. I think Denzel Mims is pretty solid too. Um, I think that he's being a little bit underrated. Ashton Davis, solid as well. LaMichael P. Ryan even had some reps in there. Bryce Hall was pretty much the reason why I put it into this A territory is because they hit on a later round dude and hit pretty damn well. Bryce Hall, big fan of him, fell for injury. Oh, excuse me, fell for injury reasons. Next, Philly, D+. Uh, yeah, a lot of people want to give him like Fs and stuff. Jalen Rager, I thought that was a stupid pick at the time, even though I had him as probably like an early second. I just still didn't feel like it fit what the uh, Eagles needed, and it, and it wasn't. It wasn't what they needed. They needed some an actual star stud wide receiver that could actually be a big impact, and they got, uh, they got a big play guy. And that's not what you need when you need to revamp your offense. You use that as a gadget piece when your offense is pretty much built and you need something more like a cherry on top. Jalen Hurts, we already know people already look, they're already looking to get off Jalen Hurts. So uh, Davion Taylor, not a big impact. Kayvon Wallace, going to be a stud, I think. Uh, I, I like that pick from the beginning. I was just hoping that maybe he wouldn't turn out as amazing as I wanted him to just because I'm tired of Eagles fans thinking that every player that they draft is going to be the next a uh, great thing in the world, but you know, they got some solid, they got some solid talent, but again, like they, they really whiffed. They really whiffed Steelers. I gave an a minus. Uh, I think they have three guys who are solid starters right now. Chase could uh, develop into an actual number one wide receiver. Hasn't seen it yet. That's why I gave him a minus Highsmith Again, same thing. We've seen flashes, not consistency. That's what, again, why I'm not giving an a minus. Um, Kevin Dotson, the only reason why I'm keeping them in that A, A minus range rather than dropping him to B plus is because he's a stud. So good job by the Steelers for doing that. Anthony McFarland, uh, who does not have two N's in his last name, is he's not good. Worth taking a shot on. I don't blame the Steelers, but he's just not good. Niners, Niners, they gave him a B plus. Uh, Javon Kinlaw has some growth to do, but definitely somebody who's pretty talented. Brandon Ayuk, really good. Again, injuries has been a, quite an issue. And the rest is, yeah, you know, yeah. So, whatever, whatever, whatever. Seahawks, um, I gave him a C minus. Again, that is solely because Damian Lewis and, you know, DJ Dallas, I think, can be somebody who has a big role there. So, that's it. Really, it. Uh, Colby Parkinson, you know, he came from my high school. A really nice guy. I hope that he's able to have a better role in the NFL especially on a team like the Seahawks, but they just got Gerald Everett to put him down further on the roster. So that kind of hurts me a little bit as hoping for Colby to actually do well. Tampa, what do you think I'm going to say? A plus. It's only A plus. I think I gave this entire draft. Uh, Tristan Wurz, arguably best right tackle in the NFL. Antron Winfield Jr., one of the best safeties. Keyshawn Vaughn, let's skip that. Uh, flip it with Tyler Johnson, who I think is one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL then you know why I absolutely love this. Like, I think they got three absolute studs in this draft class. And Keyshawn Vaughn could develop into a very talented running back as well. There's a lot to like. A lot to like. So, A+. plus. Tennessee, F. Uh, yeah, you got Christian Fulton here. Maybe that should bring it up to a D. But we don't need to talk about their first-round pick. Darrington Evans is an afterthought. Uh, and, yeah, they don't even have Cole McDonald anymore. This draft was a complete wash. And lastly, lastly, speaking of Wash, Washington starts off and gets an A. I want to give an A+, plus, but, I mean, you have the number two overall pick. Like, no, no shit. You should be able to get um, Chase Young. You should get an impact player. So, absolute stud with Chase Young. Love that. I'm so happy they didn't follow PFF and go after Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, that would have been bad. But Antonio Gibson, another impact guy, who was my guy during the draft. I had, like, an early third on him. Sadiq Charles, we'll never probably see him because they continue drafting tackles, but excellent depth. Um, Khalid Hudson, pretty solid too. Cameron Curl, that's what put it in that true A range is that he's a solid-ass safety. So that's the video, guys. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy. Apologies about the yawning and stuff. It's been one hell of a week, and I had a big-ass exam today. So wish me luck on that. I'll thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.